because the matchup was highly anticipated, but it was less competitive than what we really thought it was going to be. And coming in, the statistics didn't really favor one of these teams in the Dolphins um, because they were playing the Bills, but uh, the Miami Dolphins, they're 1-11 in the last 12 games against teams with winning records. So they were already kind of losing from the jump. And then in the last seven games against the Buffalo Bills, home or away, they're 0-7. So the Bills have been whacking them for years and years in the past seven, five seasons. Whatever the case is, they've been beating down on the Miami Dolphins for a good minute. And the Dolphins just really struggle winning the big game. That's been the kind of routine that we've seen. That's that consistent factor that we've seen within the Miami Dolphins. However, with this game, I don't really think it means too much for the Buffalo Bills just because they took care of business much like we expected. I mean, a lot of people like me, if you looked at the statistics from the previous matchups, you kind of knew the Buffalo Bills was going to have a good game and end up winning. However, the thing that threw me off is that the, Buff the Miami Dolphins just decided to lay down and not even put up a fight. These guys just... Oh, my God. It was, it was not good football from the Miami Dolphins. Not only did Tua struggle, and we'll get to his concussion things in a, in a minute, but he also struggled on the offensive end. But I noticed the play calling wasn't necessarily on point either. We've seen a lot of motion in the backfield, which is good to keep the defense on their toes, but they weren't really trying to throw the ball downfield. I know it's a, a, a new thing where we're seeing a lot of teams run the ball more than what they would usually throw it, but... You got to get your guys the ball in open space. And I didn't really see the Miami Dolphins do that, whereas I still seen the, the Buffalo Bills at least target people downfield. They at least made some sort of throws to get their guys the ball in open space. And I, I mean, I, I know you want to get the running game established, too, with the Dolphins. Um, and shout out to uh, Devon A-Chain. He did his thing um, on the ground game, running with the Miami Dolphins. But above all, bro, you, you got to switch it up if something's not clicking. The Bills were able to stop them from the jump, and the Dolphins didn't really have an answer for it. Tariq Hill only had, I think, three receptions for the full game. Didn't even get six receptions at all, or even ten. Or, like, I mean, you just think about this, and it's like, okay, the game plan coming in just didn't work. So you got to switch it up. You're going to halftime. You're losing already. It's time to switch it up. But... Above all, I didn't see great football from the Miami Dolphins. They struggled at home, and ultimately, the defense wasn't even there as well. Um, you gave up three rushing touchdowns just in the first half to the Buffalo Bills. So, therefore, the Bills didn't even... I mean, they were just cruising the whole game. They looked mad consistent. Not going to say they looked excellent or anything, but they looked very, very consistent at what they did in this game. And that is something to applaud and be excited about if you're a Buffalo Bills fan, but... Above all, man, the Dolphins, they didn't even put up a fight. It, it almost it seemed like they went out there with the attitude of let's just get this over with. Let's move on to next week. We not even like have any intensity. We're not going to play with, with any intensity at all throughout the game. Yeah, they came out flat in the first half. Second half, they came out flat again. Wasn't playing defense. It, was just, it just wasn't a good performance for the Miami Dolphins here. And, and now kind of going over to the two of concussions because clearly once that happened, we kind of knew it was a wrap on any type of comeback that we've seen. Uh, by then, the Bills had already slapped up 31 points. Um, the Dolphins didn't do anything. They couldn't get a point in before uh, the half and, and all of that stuff. So we knew by then it was pretty much over. However, I, I, I do think with two attack Velova, it's, this is a rough situation. Very rough situation. I feel like it's so easy to say, Oh, Tua just needs to go ahead and, and retire. He's been hurt for so many years. He's hurt every year. He has concussions every year, multiple every single year. That's that's the easy way out when you look at it that way. But ultimately, like this is something the guy worked his whole life for. Um, so us on the outside can always say, hey, it's not worth it. Um, it, you got to live the rest of your life. But if this is what this guy dedicated his life to do, it makes it that much more difficult to walk away. Now, do I think he should walk away? 
I would say, yeah, but again, I'm on the outside. I, I say, yes, he should walk away, pull an Andrew Luck and realize you still got so much more life ahead of you. But also, it's not as easy as it sounds because this is a person who actually is one good at his job, what he does. And two, he enjoys doing it. He's in a good situation where he can help his people. So it's just a lot of pressure on on what Tua can do. And it's tough right now for him. So, I mean, the thing is, though, He's had multiple concussions last year. The year before that had concussions. Hell, even when he was drafted in the NFL, he was already dealing with a lot of issues of having concussions. So it's just for the safety aspect, it's almost time for him to, to j- just go ahead and, hey, hey, man, hang up the jersey. Hang up the jersey. Do something else. Maybe you can coach, but you got to figure it out at some point. And unfortunately, it seems like that time for him to figure out what he's going to do after football is just – knocking on the door more and more and more. So he's got to take that time and possibly, personally, my personal preference is to say step away, but I don't think there's any other measures you can go about in terms of safety and what he could do to possibly prevent all of these different concussions that he's suffering. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Tua is in a tough situation. I will say, you know, either way it goes, I think for the Dolphins, it's going to be rough for them. It's going to be rough. No two attack of a low, but that offense is already going to struggle. Um, their backup is Skylar Thompson. Don't know much about him right now. Luckily, the Dolphins don't have a super difficult schedule ahead of them uh, for the next four to five weeks. Seahawks is on there. I think they, they play a couple of teams where it's like it's, it's not sleepers, but you know you can you can haggle your way through the game to possibly get a win on um, the Titans, Patriots, Colts. Some of those are going to be L's. Cardinals start to get a little bit more difficult toward the end. But, you know, ultimately, it's a good situation for Skylar Thompson because he's still got weapons over there. But I don't we're going to see if he's ready or not. We really going to see if he's ready or not. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see.